Intel just pretty much released the SKUs for their next X-Series processors. Uh, everything from the 7980XE all the way down to, what was the one we didn't get? I think it was the 7900X. No, probably the 7940X. These are the last three in the product line of the X-Series i9 CPUs, which honest to God, as we all know, are responses to Threadripper. That's all you really need to know. These are the CPUs Intel yanked out of their ass to basically try to have something to keep themselves from being completely demolished by AMD. The fact that the counterpart, which is the 7960X, scored 3,200 on Cinebench, and the AMD counterpart, which is the, what, 1950X, that scored 3,000, or more, actually. I'm hearing it's scoring higher than that. It's still slightly behind the 7960X, but does it really fucking matter? For the simple fact of, for that little bit, those 200 extra points or so, give or take, you're giving Intel an extra $700. Right there is sheer fucking comedy. I was in a forum, I was reading stuff, and there were people actually talking about how great Intel is and how Threadrippers just glued together CPUs, it's garbage, look at Intel Cinebench scores. And I'm just like, really dude? This is your defense? It scored higher by a few points? And that justifies an extra $700? You're on crack. You're fucking crazy. It's just sheer insanity, that thought process. Over the next month, there will be a lot of people arguing over who offers the best high-end desktop CPUs. Whether the crown sits on the Intel X99, or sorry, the X299 platform, or AMD's Ryzen Threadripper platform, which is the X399. Intel has recently revealed their 14, 18, and 19 core Skylake X SKUs, with Intel reporting that their upcoming 16 core i9 will be able to achieve Cinebench scores of 3,200. While this is very impressive score when compared to Intel's older products, even outperforming the 24 core last gen Xeon CPUs, it does not offer what anyone would call a great value for the money, especially when you add in Threadripper to the mix. AMD has already shown that their Ryzen 10 core 1950X is capable of achieving scores at around 3,050, which is a huge considering the fact that AMD's 1950X is $700 cheaper and offers the same core count. Both Intel's X299 and AMD's X399 have their own advantages, with Skylake X offering higher potential clock speeds than Ryzen, particularly when overclocked, but with a huge price increase that comes alongside it. Certain workloads will favor each platform, especially when comparing products with equivalent pricing. This will make this generation one of the most interesting that we have had seen in CPUs in some time, around 10 years. And that was from 03D CD, I can't remember. That little icon confuses me. But I was reading somewhere, I lost it though, because my internet was out, so I was reading this crap on my phone on a tiny screen. But I swear I recall seeing an article that the 16 core Ryzen could be overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz on each core. That's 16 fucking cores. I wish I could find this shit so I don't look like an asshole. All right, I actually found the article. AMD Threadripper 1950X OC to 4.1 gigahertz on all 16 cores. And test it delivers otherworldly performance according to WCC Tech. This leak comes courtesy of a Redditor who has actually managed to get his hands on the 1950X early on and not only benchmarked it, but do so after overclocking it. This is one of several reports we've seen as of late indicating that Threadripper is surprisingly a better overclocker than mainstream Ryzen. The consensus seems to be that the 4.0 GHz overclock on all cores is within reach on most Threadripper CPUs. Well, considering it's fucking soldered. The owner of this particular 1950X is reportedly achieving 4.0 GHz on all cores at 1.25 volts with a Thermaltake 3.0 liquid cooler. Sweet! Simply because Thermaltake's liquid coolers are often RBG. And we all know I'm a whore for colors. That is simply unattainable by the majority of mainstream Ryzen processors at this voltage. The owners test the chip once at 4.1 GHz on Geekbench 3 and once at 4.0 GHz in Cinebench R15. The motherboard he used is from an ASRock. The precise model wasn't specified. All eight memory DIMMs were populated with 3066 MHz DDR4 memory. Uh, Wendell swears by ASRock motherboards. Usually when we actually talk about stuff, he always puts his weight behind ASRock. It's really making a name for itself as of late, in all honesty. 
I wasn't thinking about ASRock in 2013, 2014, or even 2015. But overall, there's tons of stuff here you could see. Uh, I'll even throw up some screen caps. And this part of the article, the 4.1 gigahertz figures become even more astronomical for Threadripper. The chip manages to score 58,391 points in Geekbench 3, which not only is by far the highest score for any desktop processor we've ever seen, but it also secures a 37% lead over the 7900X, overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, which manages to score around 42,600 points at the same time. Fuck, I want a Threadripper, dude. Well, anyway, I should probably cut it here because basically it would sound like I'm cheerleading the Threadripper, which is not what I want to do. I don't want to seem like I'm in the pocket of any company. My main concern is always the best deal for the fucking consumer because I am one. Well, being specifically for any team and shouting their greatness at any point feels too much like being a North Korean for me. I am happy, though, that Threadripper is coming out literally tomorrow. Um, I might be able to get my hands on one just to play with it. We don't know yet. It's all up in the air. But uh, I just I don't really have any words. This is amazing. It makes me really want one. Like, I wanted one before. But now I really want one. You know? You know when you want something and then you just like, oh, that seems great. And then it, like you find out more about it and you're like, oh, God, I really want it now. Like, I, I kind of have to have it. It's like how I felt when the BMW S1000 RR HP4 came out. And it's just like, oh, my God, I'd kill for this motorcycle. I need to cut this shit out. Uh, you know the whole spiel. I can't ask you to give more of a shit than me. Rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to. If not, that's perfectly fine by me. But in doing so, whether you like or hate something, it still tells YouTube I'm here. And then they'll rub my nipples and tell me I'm a good boy. And if I'm really lucky, I'll get big enough to wear where attractive Russian girls will whip me with a wet towel and then piss on me. Hey, don't judge me. Don't judge my fantasies. All right. I know what you watch. <laughs> but seriously, I'm out of here. Adios, pichachos. More videos coming soon, hopefully. I should have worked on them when I didn't have the internet. I'm irresponsible.